Uh, good morning. You all are welcome to the day fifth, today's second session, uh, Healthcare Startups Evolution to Revolution in this AICT sponsored uh, SGTP. I am very happy to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Nilay Lakar. Dr. Nilay Lakar is a founder and CEO of Synthera, Synthera Biomedical, a Pune-based advanced material startup with core focus on development of specialty glass materials for healthcare and allied applications. Prior sir, the slide is not getting uh, changed. Is it visible? Sir, it is visible, but needs to be on full screen and it is not getting shifted to the next slide. Here I am changing actually. Okay, sir. Otherwise, I will share from my end. You can stop sharing. Okay. Yes. Can I start? Just a minute, sir. Let okay. me share it. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Dr. Nile Lakhar is the founder and CEO of Synthera Biomedical, a Pune based advanced material startup with a core focus on development of specialty glass materials for healthcare and allied applications. Prior to incorporating Synthera in 2015, he received his Bachelor of Engineering degree in Chemical Engineering from TSEC, Mumbai. He completed MSc and PhD in Biomaterials and Tissue Engineering from University College of London, UK, followed by a postdoc stint at the Institute of Biomaterials, Germany. As a researcher turned entrepreneur, he brings about 10 plus years of experience in specialty glass R&D and product development with more than 16 academic papers and six patent grant granted and still in the pipeline. So I welcome you, sir, on this uh, QIP talk and I hope everybody will enjoy it and wish you all the best and please we can start. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Shinde. It is a pleasure to be here. Uh, so I will just share my screen for this then. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So is my, is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So I can, uh, so I'll begin. And in case there are any screen uh, uh, troubles, you can please um, interrupt me anytime. Um, so, uh, yes, thank you very much, Sindhi, sir. And it's a pleasure to be um, uh, interacting with, uh, interacting with uh, all with you and with all the participants in this session. You know, we, uh, I think now our relation with UNA College goes back uh, to around 2000. 19 so 
uh, this is almost the fourth year that we have something or the other going on with Muna College with a lot of activities. So it's always a pleasure when we, when I get this uh, when you know when such opportunities arise for us to share our wisdom on the uh, to share whatever you know we have experienced during our startup journey and you know uh, provide the right motivation and inspiration for any. Um, uh, aspiring entrepreneurs in the audience. So, just I'll I'll start off by giving a uh, by giving an overview about Synthera. So, Synthera is basically um, sorry, is my is my slide visible? Company overview. Yes, sir, it is visible. Perfect. Thank you. So, so we are basically we are India's first bioactive glass company. Um, and to my knowledge, we are the, the we are the only company that is focusing, uh, and almost exclusively on bioactive glass as uh, our uh, material uh, as our material platform for a wide variety of products. So we focus on products that are based on bioactive glass, uh, where we have a pipeline of multiple products which we have developed that are either patented or in various stages of patent filing or they are off patent technologies okay and they are for uh, diverse application areas then the 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 the, the core of synthera is the technology team um, so that is myself and dr amol um, our cto is uh, you know we bring the uh, advanced degrees from europe's top medical schools um, with uh, uh, you know, core expertise in biomaterials, uh, the rapid R and D and product development, and we bring a lot of part. I mean, over the years, we have uh, to in order to develop this pipeline, we have uh, we have you know the, developed some close partnerships with global entities in different areas. So ongoing, we have you know, uh, including with Pune College, we have ongoing partnerships in India, then South Korea, Australia, Belgium. Uh, in the pipeline, hopefully, you know, we see that there might be opportunities in Israel and Japan. These are for different, different products within the, uh, within our pipeline, different technologies. And, um, you know, it, it, it sort of um, help, is helping us to drive our product uh, development journey forward for, for our products. So, then just an idea about the core team. Um, so, I'm the, I'm the founder. Uh, sir gave my introduction. Um, then Dr. Amol is a polymer uh, polymer engineer who has then done his master's and uh, in uh, applied polymer science in Germany. Then his PhD from uh, KU Leuven in Belgium, uh, followed by a postdoc in uh, uh, in the US at UC Davis. Um, we both bring you know a good number of publications. We are starting to add. And which most, uh, I, I would say that uh, uh, almost all our publications were from our previous careers in uh, academia. Now we are slowly, slowly starting to add to the publications from uh, Synthera as well. Plus all the patents that are granted and filed, they have all come from, um, come from through our work in Synthera. So, um, then, and on the, you know, on the operational side, uh, with the company's affairs, I am uh, uh, very ably assisted by uh, Dipti, who is our general manager, corporate and commercial. Um, she is uh, she is a qualified uh, uh, qualified uh, advocate and uh, company secretary. So together we bring a nice mix of experience in you know the technical side with applied R and D and product development, and on the commercial side on the and the you know the um, uh, company affairs side uh, with Bitti. So it's a it's a good uh, I mean we, it's a good uh, mix that we bring. Um, and I think uh, and you know I think uh, for us the main the, the main thing is to have basically this mix and we and you know the, that we consider to be our strength in some ways. So. I'll just get into the get into some technical details in terms of what is bioactive glass. 
Now we define bioactive glass as a platform of glass and glass ceramic materials, biomaterials. And by platform, I mean that it is like an, a family, a family of materials uh, that can stimulate, that can do two things, um, uh, either simultaneously or separately. It can stimulate tissue to undergo repair and regeneration. Okay, whether it is hard tissue such as bone and teeth or soft tissue such as skin. Um, and on the other hand, also, it, uh, we are working on applications whereby bioactive glass can destroy microorganisms and prevent microbial growth in the environment. For example, on surfaces where you want surface disinfection or in water where you want to disinfect water, um, water the your the water within water bodies so and uh, there are different so depending on what is the application the glass can can have different uh, uh, can have different functions um and the idea is so what excites us about this uh, the, what has excited us about this uh, you know this particular material you know i've been working on it since 2008 and what is interesting always is that bioactive glass is smart, uh, multifunctional, safe, and scalable. Okay, and I'll the, the the safety and scalability are reasonably easy to understand. The smartness I will uh, uh, I, I will uh, sort of go into a little depth in the, the next couple of slides. Okay, so how so how does it work? So I define two. Uh, areas where it where bioactive glass is being used. Okay, so the first area is in tissue repair. Now, um, bioactive glass was developed in the 1970s as a uh, as a material for bone tissue repair and regeneration. Um, and the person and you know basically the grandfather of the field is a uh, scientist named Dr. Professor Larry Hench. To develop this material uh, called 4.5 S5 bioactive glass. It's called 4.5 S5 bioglass. Okay, and at a very um, basic level, what how it works is that you know when you imagine that a material like this is implanted um, in vivo in, within the within the body um, at say uh, in a bone defect site, then what happens is as soon as it uh, is implanted there is a process of um, sort of th there are these ionic processes that begin so there is the process of uh, ion release from the glass okay so the glass is made up of um, silica calcium phosphorus and uh, silica calcium phosphorus and sodium and some of these ions as they are released and also from the surrounding environment what they are doing is that they are adhering to the surface of the silica particle, uh, to the surface of the um, bio glass, uh, the bio glass particle to form uh, to form a uh, bone like etching. So there is a silica gel surface that gets formed due to this ion release, and then there is addition of ions to this gel to form bone like hydroxyapatite. Now this. Basically, the, this hydroxyapatite layer is a very um, uh, is leads to actually the stimulation of the surrounding tissue to start to colonize the surface of the HA coated glass, and then as these cells adhere, uh, as these cells migrate towards the material, and they adhere and they start growing and uh, multiplying and also differentiating because this is happening at the stem cell level. The, there is a crystallization of the bone-like matrix and maturation of cells leading to new bone formation. Okay, and while all this is happening, the material itself, as it releases ions, is resorbing. Okay, and ultimately, so therefore, what you want is a situation where, where what we are looking at is a situation where you have a scaffolding effect. The material is acting as a scaffold for the holding the cells, and there is a stimulation effect whereby more cells are being stimulated to participate in the regeneration process. And ultimately, as it resolves, it gets resolved, it gets resolved completely and then replaced entirely by bone. Okay. So this is, uh, in a nutshell, this is how it works in tissue repair. 
So the way it works in dis uh, in disinfection, which I mentioned as a second area, is that imagine a situation where uh, you know you are you have a uh, highly polluted water um, sample, and you are uh, passing it to a column where you have sand, where you facing sand plus pebbles plus uh, a certain amount of antimicrobial bioactive glass. Now, in this case, what is happening that once the water comes in contact with the bioactive glass, the bioactive glass starts to release ions. Now, this time, these ions are in the form of phosphorus, calcium, sodium. And because the it is a microbial composition, Antimicrobial composition. We have incorporated some amount of silver and copper into the into the glass. That also gets dissolved, uh, gets uh, uh, gets released. It happens at a sustained rate in both uh, for both whether it is tissue repair or disinfection, and the rate is optimized so that it actually this stops the process of cell division. It interferes with the bacterial um, uh, nutrient uh, nutrient mechanism destabilizes the cell membrane it also this is due to ph changes and also due to the metal ions which have these anti uh, i mean they have biocidal effects so ultimately what happens is that your microorganisms in that sample are completely destroyed and new microorganisms are then stopped from forming and then essentially what happens is that you know the, a very dirty water sample in that way is con converted to a completely clean water sample um uh purely to one pass pass through of uh, this sort of um of this column so this gives you some idea of how it works in the disinfection now in terms of the products that we are that we work on we work on materials that are the key ingredients so think of um, bioactive glass as a, as a family of apis these APIs then they form a key ingredient in the pro final products that are used in uh, applications such as bone repair, which I described, dental enamel repair. So sensitivity toothpaste, for example, they are, uh, the bio, there is a very large uh, product range, uh, product segment where the active ingredient is bioactive glass. Skin care and repair is. Uh, is an area where, uh, for example, wound healing is a project uh, that we are carrying out with uh, Pune uh, with Pune College, where we are seeing how it can be used in wound healing. Then on the cosmetic side, uh, there are uh, products. I mean, there are technologies being explored in near skin care and nail care. Uh, then stem cell production is a uh, is an emerging area. Surface disinfection and water purification. So I explained how it works with this on a disinfection list. So we are developing products in these areas as well. So it we have a product pipeline with products in with, at various stages of um, technology readiness. Okay, and um, uh, you know this has all happened through a sort of evolution over the past five years, uh, over the since two thousand fifteen in terms of you know what is the strategy for. Uh, uh, which products we should prioritize, which products show the greatest uh, traction from the market, where we can, which are the products that are adding the greatest value. Um, so the pipeline is, a, the you know, product pipelines, they're built as a combination uh, based on many different factors. Okay. So the brief for this talk was to focus on uh, our journey as far as uh, with our patent fit uh with our patented uh, bone regeneration product this is the product that we started working on first in so when we started even before i incorporated the company in 2015 i had started working on this problem so uh, and it it's a good uh, this will be this is a good sort of case study from our perspective just to give you an idea of how the journey was what were the opportunities what were the challenges and just what are the things to be that uh, that that would need to be sort of taken in mind when having the, when going through this journey, which is important for aspiring entrepreneurs especially. So, uh, on the pro, on the when we were looking at 
uh, developing a bone repair at the uh, when we are looking we are looking at repair uh, developing these bone repair materials so we try to understand what was the problem that was being faced by clinicians um in this area so typically um bone so bone repair the materials used are called as bone grafts and uh, you know the, the products that are uh, used for this purpose they are called bone graft substitutes so it is a material that promotes bone healing bone formation osseous reconstruction at one or more sites uh, the, within the body where there has been bone loss due to injuries diseases or congenital deformity okay now from speaking to the different clinicians we understood that there is no you have various products that are already in the market that are being used as bone grafts uh, so the patient's own bone or human cadaver bone or animal uh, processed animal bone or other synthetics these are all being used but we are finding that there is no product uh, no single product that combines very critical need one is the 100% it should be 100% free of infection toxicity and allergic reactions it should have then it should have a highly predictable bone regeneration performance in the sense that the response of the tissue to the, the to the uh, implant should be as far as possible the same uh, regardless of you know factors such as what the age of the patient or what is the genetic makeup of the patient and that is a very important thing because depending on gen the genetic makeup it may be that certain uh, types of grafts are suitable certain types are not suitable so we wanted one that is suitable for all kinds of patients then you want a product that is bone biomimetic in terms of its structure and function meaning it mimics the properties of bone to the highest possible extent okay and the main areas of work in this are in terms of the porosity where the graft porosity should be similar to the resort uh, to the bone porosity and the resorption rate of the graft should be complementary to the rate at which the repair process is happening uh, in the bone okay so that was a major challenge the self, the next one was to you know offer opportunities for a personalized approach in um, bone grafting because the personalized regenerative therapy is being considered is um, becoming a uh, is, is becoming a major area of uh, progress for a lot of clinics for a lot of uh, surgical procedures such as this where you want to be able to carry out the tissue regeneration in a personalized way and so for example uh, having grafts that are 3d printed to uh, as per the defect um, exact defect characteristics or using grafts in combination with the patient's own stem cells these are personalized approaches and these kind of personalized approaches your grafts need to be developed for that purpose so that was one uh, uh, one challenge and then last last one which is the uh, obviously the most important in india is that it needs to be easily available and it needs to be more affordably priced than what is available in the market because bone grafts are imported uh, india is a heavily import dependent market for uh, bone graft products as of now more than 70 up to 80% of uh, bone graft products in india are uh, are imported mainly from uh, developed countries okay so based on all these inputs we started our work and we uh, started developing a product that would sort of satisfy these requirements and we focused so uh, what we did was starting from the material we focused on the platform and we uh, worked on a on a family of materials called bioactive phosphate glasses okay and then we ensured then right from the development stage itself we ensured certain things number one we wanted it to be available in different forms for ease of clinical handling so the idea is to be able to offer the, the there are certain procedures where the bone graft is required in granule form there are certain other procedures where it is better that the graft is available in paste form so that it is injectable there are certain other procedures where 
if the defect size is large then you want it in block form okay and uh, because the particles may not be uh, may not fit properly within the uh, within the defect site but the block will fit very well or machinable blocks are perfect for such situations so availability in different forms was uh, was something that we were able to achieve it is uh, we made because this is a synthetically developed product it is 100% safe and there are no adverse effects due to infection or immune responses that can that will happen from a craft like this okay quick healing so basically the primary outcome is to ensure that your healing is happening in a quick and highly predictable way with donation happening within 4 to 6 months we were able to you know we are up to the animal study so animal study phase we were able to demonstrate that with this product then near complete biomimetic behavior to the optimization of material characteristic what we mean here is that again we optimized on the porosity we optimized on the resorption rate for uh, certain uh, for certain uh, procedures so in the, we started for we were working on the dental procedures for this uh, for 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 this product for a start and we optimized the characteristics for use in dental oral dent, uh, dental and maxillofacial applications okay and then what we have sort of look to achieve going forward is to ensure this personalization at ever deeper level within the same product Uh, within the same platform so within using a family of materials of bioactive phosphate glass we look to ensure that there is that these materials can be used with more specialized processing such as 3d printing or cad cam and also go even further to see to uh, adopt a tissue engineering approach where you are combining the grafts with stem cells for example and um, Uh, implanting it into the into the patient's body so these are personalization uh, uh, challenges and they will come and you know they they are more long term the other ones is what we were able to sort of ensure were built into the product development right from the start okay so the novelty really that we looked at right from the start again was that the idea was to have a combination of a new composition which is not available in the market and a new way of processing this uh, this particular composition so as to add this porosity as i mentioned porosity is an extremely important characteristic in bone graft so and we with and when we did this we found that there was you know we found that there is a novelty aspect the novelty aspect in what we are doing is quite significant which means that there is a opportunity for us to uh, uh, you know develop new intellectual property for startups like us that are developing new technologies like this the intellectual developing and safeguarding the intellectual property through patents through trademarks is uh, i it can be is one of the most important um, uh objectives so we so we we kept that in mind right from the start and uh through this process then we were able to identify what is novel about our product now mode of action wise again i'll uh, this um, to, to provide you a brief idea it's that we have as opposed to a non porous material we have uh, developed a porous phosphate glass material okay where you have 60% porosity and there or due to that you have a much higher surface area from which there will be number one ion release and number two there will be a larger uh, space for uh, cells to uh, osteoprogenitor cells to actually uh, adhere to the surface of the uh, adhere to the surface of the particle okay so again so it is a uh, and then more and more cells adhere they start to uh, colonize the uh, colonize the uh, graft uh, the graft surface they basically start to form new bone and over and uh, there and at the same time the uh, the graft is resorbed so 
we so the right i believe in the right ions at the right regeneration for stimulating bone tissue regeneration is again what we were able to able to show and these graphs over here they are showing what is the, the what is the bone regeneration area when these when this porosin uh, product is implanted in a uh, rabbit femur uh, uh, in a rabbit femur defect so we carried out this animal study and we assessed the healing at two weeks and six weeks and we found that uh, compared to um, so our product is ppg compared to xg which is a very famous um, animal derived uh, product which is the market leader we found that ours was showing better bone larger bone regeneration with greater predictability because you can see that the error bars are much smaller so the variation between animal to animal is much lesser so we demonstrated all this and this was then published in our paper uh, in journal of material science materials in medicine which was then uh, it was published in our paper in 2021 okay actually uh, so this uh, 2021 paper has all our results up to in vitro stage in vivo stage we have just gotten a paper accepted uh, in journal of osteointegration so Again, just a very brief snapshot of the, the snapshot of the results showing some, you know, the SEM images of how, uh, you know, when you carry out cell culture with stem cells, how the cells are um, uh, adhering to the surface, how they are um, penetrating through the, the bone graft porous structure and to what extent they are colonizing the graft and so on. All of this we have shown all uh, and also it is published in our paper. So if we had to, so if we had to sort of summarize what has been the journey, 2000, uh, you know, since 2015 till date. So 2015 is when we incorporated Synthera. 2016, this work started um, on a, at an active level. I mean, we had started working on this product in some way or the other, right in 2015 itself. But in 2016, we got our first grant to demonstrate proof of concept for developing this product. We developed, we demonstrated it in vitro level and then filed our provisional patent application in 2017. Our first patent was granted, this patent was granted in India. We got a second grant for carrying out the animal studies in 2018. 2019, we again, we demonstrated the animal safety efficacy in rat, uh, in rat and rabbit, sorry, I should mention rabbit and beagle dog models. Um, we filed patents in uh, abroad and we restarted and then we got our CDSC or BCGI test license for this product. And last year then, you know, we received the clinical trial approval, started our clinical trial. We got a patent granted in Korea, one paper published, second paper accepted. And we received a third grant. So it has been a, like, um, you know, a case of more and more progress being made as the years have gone by. Uh, last so last year I would say was a very good year from the perspective of for this particular technology, um, and you know the momentum has grown uh, grown over the years to the stage now where this clinical trial is ongoing and then there will be another so this is a single center clinical trial we are carrying out there will be another multi center clinical trial uh, to be carried out in different centers either in within Maharashtra or all over India. And then the idea will be to launch this product in India after getting the necessary regulatory approvals. So I think if I had to sort of understand, okay, for development of this product, what are the opportunities that we have had? I think the, the number one thing that I would point out is the support systems that are in place to Help the to help the aspiring entrepreneur to get all the way up to this stage. Now, when we you know when I started work on Synthera as a scientist with no real entrepreneurial or business background, it would be very difficult for me to start any of this work by myself. So for for uh, for for scientists like us, the uh, main areas of support just to start off and to start thinking about how to uh, take go forward on the journey the biggest sources of support can be the incubator 
so we are right now uh, associated as on date with two incubators one is um, ncl uh, venture center uh, in pune then we have uh, it uh, tbi in bhuvaneshwar and then now we are with also ipp knowledge park in hyderabad so there is a net just so i mentioned three there is a network of many incubators throughout india pune has several incubators uh, in place that are driven by different programs such as there is the atal innovation mission then there are different programs by dsp bbp etc etc what is common to all of them is that they are uh, their objective is to provide business mentoring and networking to the, the opportunities to the entrepreneurs to pro then to provide scientific and ip services and also most importantly to assist with the fundraising okay so you know we uh, with venture center for example where we have been incubated since 2015 we have received support in all of these areas and this has really you know helped us to uh, bring this product all the way up to this stage okay then the support from central and state government we are uh, so uh, it is in the form of so grants are a, uh, grants are a very important uh, means to sort of get the work going off the ground and we have now take as i mentioned previously we have taken as uh, we, we have uh, uh, received several grants we have applied for several more grants we have received the dsc tdb startup of the year award for example that carried a cash prize this is at central level then at state level there is the maharashtra state innovation society uh, which last year they have launched a program for uh, you know uh, reimbursement of patenting costs reimbursement of product development testing costs uh, up to a certain certain amount so we have not we are we are we have applied for that uh, the, you know sort of support under that program Uh, let's see if it works out. But if it does, it will be very, very you know, it will be a perfect way of support from the state government for what we are doing. Then the private sector is very has uh, also shown very good interest in such uh, in such innovation, and we see that happening for Sinthera. We see it happening for many companies that are working in the pharmaceutical, biopharmaceutical, biotech, healthcare, medical device. Um, in vitro diagnostic space we see that there is increasing interest from investors vcs for funding and there is interest increasing interest from msme and uh, multinational companies for strategic tie ups with startups so investors want to invest with a view to getting a return on the investment msmes and mnc's want to work with you so that they can take your products forward into the market so that support that sort of interest is increasing and i think for us as the entrepreneurs in order to take an innovation forward the main i would say the number one resource that we have is the team and that is where what we found is that there is a very good opportunity because there is a very nice growing r and d talent pool where you are finding that you know the masters level and phd's level uh, candidates for any area of specialization are are uh, are available they, they uh, there is a lot of work that is happening in labs in uh, research institutes all over the country in various areas that are complementary to our area so there is a steady stream of students that are interested in uh, working with us and that is very important for us in product development because ultimately having access to the right um to man uh, to the right talent pool uh, is is absolutely key if we want to take forward these innovations you cannot do all of this by yourself as an entrepreneur okay so these were good opportunities for us as you can see the cartoon think of this as a window of opportunity <laughs> i think that would uh, you know the cartoon is very appropriate because it then takes me to the next side of next part of the 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 next uh, side the other side of the coin which is the challenges so i think again when it comes to this particular product if i had to isolate what are the challenges that may be involved i think the biggest challenge 
for us has been just a long gestation period from the idea to market stage. Okay, we started on this in 2015. It is seven years and we have come to the pilot clinical stage. Okay, so seven years and counting and this is still a product that is in development. And there is possibly another two to three years before the actual commercialization of this product of it. We, you know, we, we have to take that into account. Now, it is the sort of situation where we started off with this one product and then, it, and then you know, started on the development journey. And then in this time, there are other products that have been developed and they have moved quicker. So it is very possible those may be commercialized quicker than this product. And whereas this product is, has taken longer time because of uh, various, uh, various uh, issues, I think. The regulatory is one, then funding is another, I'll, and these are all points that I come to uh, as we, you know, on this slide. So long gestation period is one. Cash flow management is the is is the the biggest is is another uh, very a very large challenge because in very long large very long in projects with very long gestation. Uh, uh, gestation periods, you will be raising multiple rounds of funding in order to uh, to do different, in order to achieve different milestones in the pro in the product development. So as I told you, we have raised three rounds of grants so far, and they and uh, you know as an innovator, it would be wonderful if I were to get a single round uh, that would basically cover my entire cost of development right from idea up to product in the market but that does not happen and so you are raising multiple rounds that takes a lot of time effort uh, energy of the entrepreneur and then you know of course once you get uh, the money in place then it can be all the issue, procedural issues with such as delays in grant approval disbursement uh, these can often actually lead to halting in the journey because you know you want to develop your product further you want to carry out tests and trials and so on but unless the money is in the bank you really can't go ahead okay because these are uh, these are uh, quite uh, financially intensive activities so cash flow management uh, is a can uh, what's what the challenge for us has been a challenge for us another thing is regulatory hurdles because i think um, the number one thing that has to be considered when you're developing the products like this is what are the regulatory, um, what is the regulatory pathway going to be? And it, um, this can be different from country to country. Uh, so, and so when I mention ambiguity, for example, as an issue, this is less of an issue, I think in the US, for example, where bone graft products have been uh, in the market and regulated, for a very long time. And therefore the rules for bringing a product to the market are clear cut. In India, the regulations have uh, come much later. And therefore the ambiguity in the regulations is much higher. And whereas, and what can happen here is that whereas you know established companies may be able to withstand these ambiguities and they may be able to work around them. For startups, this can become quite difficult because if you're working on a single product, and a regulatory, uh, regulatory uh, a rule is not clear cut, then that makes it much more, that much more difficult for the entrepreneur to plan out how the journey is going to be in terms of what should be the strategy and what will be the timelines and costs. Then that is ambiguity and tightening is something that again, now we are seeing uh, has happened at all in India and in other international markets as well. So for example, when you started out um, uh, in 2015, you, Europe versus the US, Europe was considered to be an easier market to enter because um, CE, the, because the European regulatory mechanism, which is CE, was a much easier um, uh, regular mechanism than the US FDA. In the years since that time, it has absolutely flipped. So the C European may this has become much harder than the US uh, regulatory uh, regulatory. So this tightening of rules has happened 
as a result of which again that has a uh, that has a bearing on the uh, business strategy on the go to market strategy which international markets you want to focus where you should patent etc etc so regulation brings a, can bring a lot of its own question marks now finally in all of this what has to be kept in mind or what we have understood is that it is very important also to be uh, to have the idea about the technological and market changes that happen so it has taken us seven years and counting when we started the technology landscape may have been of a particular i mean the technology landscape may have been uh, such that it was conducive for us to work on this product but then and the market also may have been receptive but in the time that it takes to develop this uh, particular product that is develop this product we have had we always have had to be aware that the market may move on okay so uh, technologies that seem interesting seven years ago may not be interesting today and the technology itself may become obsolete because there might be technologies that others are developing which come to the market quicker and then which are basically make your technology obsolete so this is one thing that you know the, the, this this is a the, this is a major challenge okay and ultimately the biggest challenge is personal because you know the idea is that you are doing while you are doing all of this you are doing it as an entrepreneur without a um, you know without uh, many a times you are starting off without a salary and then as you go along you are either you are maybe getting a salary but it will be a below market salary so the, the thing is that you are basically un, uh, paying you are basically having an opportunity cost because if you are working on this particular on your particular innovation and you are doing it full time then you are uh, doing it at the cost of maybe a well paying job where you would have the stability and the security that comes with a, a regular source of income so that can be a challenge personal uh, that become the challenge personally for the entrepreneur and then you know having the right family support system having the um, having everyone in the family on the same wavelength regarding what is being what what is being done and how the how um, uh, the entrepreneur and the family should support each other that is the big that can be a uh, you know that can be a make or break sort of challenge if you succeed with that then everything else falls into place if you don't succeed in that then you know you may have the greatest innovation but it, it you, you just won't be able to bring it forward if you're not personally you know equipped for it so take all you know looking at the entire scenario i think that you know i probably spent a lot of time with the challenges which may have made it to be discouraging but that is more of a realistic picture as far as the implementation is concerned if you look at the trend the fact is that this genuine need for making india innovate in india is being realized more and more seriously in 2015 when we started there was you know this uh, need had been realized but this it has become stronger and stronger and you know various stakeholders are to making taking steps to support entrepreneurs every year okay there it is the support is increasing whether it is from you know government support or whether it is you know private um, uh, private uh, support through private uh, private partnerships that is increasing we are seeing also that industry academia connects are getting stronger and stronger where because the academia is uh, because both of them are realizing the value of working together uh very closely where you know the it, it is becoming more and more clear that they should work that academy and industry should work closely and should have the right mechanisms to do that i you know i'll give an example where uh, you know when we started and we were located in uh, ncl innovation park which is a stone's throw away from ncl campus um we you know just to make some samples or just to test a few samples we had access to some of the best equipment in ncl campus but we had no access to actually enter the premises and use that uh, utilize that equipment for our 
for our needs because the mechanisms to for startups to use these uh, access these equipment was just not there okay and therefore there was this we were the, initially it was a situation where we were in competition so if there was a piece of equipment then the startup was in competition with the students with the other faculty members and with larger companies to access the same piece of equipment where there was no real differentiation between any of these and the startups i mean we we therefore found that it was very difficult to access the instruments essentially this has actually uh, reduced over the years now it is much easier for us to access the instruments there are proper mechanisms there is a proper um, you know uh, uh tech uh, there's a proper business office in ncl where they have a point of contact for carrying out all these activities and it has become much more streamlined so this has helped to make the connect become stronger and we see that all that also to uh, the many different institutes that we are are more getting connected with us and you know the number of institutes getting trying wanting to associate with us is increasing by the year so we are seeing this personally seeing all of this we see that yes there is endless scope for new success stories in domains of strategic importance now strategic importance is the keyword because these are areas where india becoming self sufficient and um, in as far as the um, r and d the manufacturing is concerned is a national priority so doing this in bio uh, biopharma health tech agri tech renewable energy they are all national priorities and therefore the scope for uh, for uh, startups to go into these areas is endless as always certain challenges remain are ever present product market fit trying to ensure that you have a product that the market will actually be attracted to is always there costs timelines regulatory pathways these are all challenges that are going to have to be navigated by the entrepreneur come what may so they have to be we have to be ready for it again things we see that it become it is becoming easier for entrepreneurs to sort of navigate these challenges as well um so i would say that the future the, the future is quite positive even as far as these challenges is concerned okay so so i mean if i had to really end with some take home messages and especially for the aspiring entrepreneurs who may be there i would say you know it is uh, entrepreneurship is a very highly rewarding activity in itself where I'll, and it is important and the idea is for to be uh, sort of um uh, ready for both for both sides of the coin you know so when you are looking to you know, i mean the idea should be to push hard to succeed but be ready for the long haul in the sense that it will be a long term journey and you know uh, that entrepreneurship ultimately it's not a 100 meter sprint it's the mar- it's more like a marathon so being ready for that is important then pursue the dream but keep body and soul together so keeping body and soul together means basically you know keeping the, the making sure that your basic needs as an entrepreneur are taken care of while you are pursuing your passion is an impo- very important bit because you know a entrepreneur that is that is uh, that does not have enough money or for food is not going to be a pro- is not going to be able to perform as a great entrepreneur okay and ultimately as yes, follow your heart but take your mind with you this came from one of our board members <laughs> it again it is a very uh, what do you say appropriate uh, take home message where your entrepreneurship can be a very sort of you know can be an emotional journey but at the same time as long as you are able to um, sort of analyze the situation as it is and take whatever steps required for your and you for your journey to succeed then you should be then you uh, you will achieve some measure of success whatever that okay so that brings me to the end you know thank you very much uh, for listening and for this uh, opportunity to share our uh, nuggets of wisdom and you know now i think 
we have a good uh, amount of time for us to have questions and have a discussion. So I'm happy to you know sort of uh, uh, start the discussion on this note. Thank you, sir. Uh, questions? Participants can unmute and ask the questions. Yes, any questions? Hello, sir. Yeah, if uh, no one has, I am having one doubt. Uh, whenever we are going from uh, synthetic bone graft or something like that, how mm -hmm. our body is going to accept that? So regarding uh, issues like allergy or something that. So can you please uh, address on this? Sure. So when you are developing uh, uh, new materials that are going to be used, um, uh, in, that are going to be in contact with the body either superficially on the skin or at the highest level as an implant, then all of this needs to be assessed for. And uh, so you are looking at um, assessing for safety and ethic, uh, safe, uh, for uh, this two, two ways. Number one is to look at the safety side and the other is to look at the efficacy side. So typically prior to any human uh, clinical trial, all of these assessments are taken care of at um, in vitro and in vivo level to uh, specific guidelines. In uh, medical devices, the guideline is called ISO 10993, which prescribes all the different uh, studies that have to be carried out uh, to determine whether the product that you have done is safe. So that, so then, the assessments that are carried out uh, include cytotoxicity, um, irritation, uh, systemic toxicity, acute toxicity, um, <clears throat> genotoxicity, carcinogenicity, immunogenicity, um, and uh, hemocompatibility, and several other. Depending on what is the risk classification of your device, you may need to carry out less tests or more tests. But uh, these tests basically give you a straight yes or no answer. So if you find that you know your product is not cytotoxic, it does not cause irritation, it does not cause systemic toxicity, it does not cause immunotoxicity, then you're, you basically have, are able to demonstrate that, okay, if, this is, if you're satisfying this standard, then you are in a position to move to the next step. Okay, typically this next step, uh, uh, will be in the form of animal implant. In our case, it was in the form of animal implantation study, where you actually implant the product into an animal uh, into a animal model, and uh, again assess for different uh, factors such as okay, what are are there any adverse events? Is the animal um, falling ill? Is it dying? Are there any fractures uh, being caused, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And also assess for what is the performance in terms of what is the bone regeneration that is being caused, uh, what is the level of bone regeneration. So these also then once they are assessed and there are guidelines that specify how these trials also can be carried out. So once these trials are carried out and if you are getting the right answer, then you are, you can say with some confidence that you can, uh, you can proceed to the clinical trial phase. Okay. So there are, it is a reasonably well, uh, well structured framework for assessing the safety, uh, safety aspect of your uh, product before you get into the clinical trial stage. Yes, okay. Any questions? Any more questions? You can chat, uh, you can type in the chat box. Okay, 
so uh, sir you can end your uh, screen share so that yeah thank you Yeah, my screen is visible. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So the last uh, formality is there that the vote of thanks, and I am really grateful. Uh, we have come up with a lot of interesting journey to the healthcare related startup, and in overall overall India. the environment is really positive and so many people are thinking and on this behalf the work done by dr nilay and his team is really commendable i'm really happy to you for your lecture your journey your talk will definitely uh, guide all the uh, all the participants Uh, you explain uh, not only um, pharm pharmacological or technical terms but at the same time uh, your journey that include a lot of hurdles and how you overcome that and really uh, the take home message that was really uh, wonderful because we 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 have to follow our passion for a long duration of time in order to be successful and we really wish you all the best uh, in your future endeavor i am really sure one day synthera will be one of the top uh, companies in the field of uh, medical devices and all that because it's like the ideas which are really innovative and those are backed with the scientific evidence also so uh, on behalf of our uh, college university aict all the participants and organizer i am really uh, thankful to you sir and this is the uh, token of our love certificate of recognition i hope my screen is visible to you so thank you thank you thank you sir thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you sir thank you very much thank you for this excellent session and uh, i think uh, the other faculty members are also soon approach you uh, for new projects and uh, your guidance also thank you thank you very much well, anyway thank you thank you sir